you love him that much? Not as bad as you're making out. How, how do you know him if I don't? Exactly, you don't know him, do you? So why don't you get to know him and then make your mind up? I've got to go. All right. Oh, have you not forgotten something? Oh, my phone. Ah, your phone. Yeah, I'll ring it for you. <laughs> oh, that is going to drive me insane. Yeah, well, now you know how I feel. Come here. Talk things with your dad. I want the perfect wedding, don't we? Mm. Mm. Oh, you two are well cute. They used to be like that once. Still are, aren't you? Till this morning. You could cut the atmos with a knife. <laughs> well, I'm glad she picked up on it, because I thought it was just me. Why did you bother choosing Titanic if you were just going to sulk through it? Look, I heard you last night on the phone. You said you didn't want to hurt me. You were listening in. Don't make it about that. Just tell me what you've done. Just with what confidence, Dan. If you should Dad. ever leave me, the life would still go on, believe me. The world could show nothing. I wonder if he sang when he was inside. So yeah, he got his head stoved in if he tried. Me. God only knows what I'd be without you. Morning, ladies. Young sir. Good morning. We were just admiring your singing. There's no need to be facetious. <laughs> Mind if I make a cuppa? You don't have to ask. Oh, sorry. I'm not used to the freedom. So, what are you going to do with your freedom today, then? Get to know my grandson. Hang out with my two favourite daughters. <laughs> oh, how many is there? God only knows. <laughs> you know, Tracy really surprised me last night. How quickly she came round. <laughs> now she wants to meet me in the cafe. <laughs> wow. Well, maybe she's realised I'm not the big, bad, toy-stealing monster she remembers. Alfie's off his food. Uh, I know how he feels. You've just thrown a greasy sausage sandwich down your neck. You could always eat, no matter what we're kicking off. Sorry, it took me ages to find a parking space. Don't even get me started on the charges. You've not missed anything. Mr. and Mrs. Dingle, Mr. Bailey, sorry for calling you in so early. Is she OK? How's she doing? Have you seen her this morning? I have. She's heavily medicated, but otherwise relatively settled. Can we see her? Oh, she won't want to see me, of course. We have a date for moving her. I'm afraid it's tomorrow. Does that place down south? No, you can't. We're not ready. She's not ready. It's Red Hill Mental Health Facility. It's a really excellent place. I'm sorry we couldn't find a bed nearer to home, but... You're sorry? We've only just got her back and you're taken away from us again. I know it's not ideal, but there really are no other options. Er, <sighs> uh, what do you think you're doing here? Keeping out of Chazzy's way till she gets bored of playing Super Mum. Plus, I'm doing some unpaid security work here. Not the word unpaid. Do I look like a mug? Do you want to answer that? Go on, get to school, will you? How much for this? <laughs> Liv, I don't have time for this. Well, I do. I'm serious. How much to get it back on the road again? You're 14, you can't even drive. So I sell it on. And Aaron does all the work on it. And it's like an investment. School now. Right, well, I will be back so we can cut our deal when my money comes to, eh? Oh, and no slacking, just because Aaron's not here. Babe, please, will you just give me a call? I need to know that you're OK. Love you. Still no luck. <laughs> well, maybe if she stops pestering him. No, blokes hate that. Yeah, well, the day I take relationship advice from you is the day I join a convent. I can't hate him. If that doesn't say she's about to dump me. I don't know what does. You're overthinking it. Who was she even talking to? Wait, stop bleating and let's get on with it, yeah? Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Look, if she's anything like Brenda, she'll be slagging off your dress sense of your hair. My hair? You know what? And half the time, she can't get enough of me. Don't make any sense. Well, there you go, then. Unless she'd said something specific, my advice is drop it. Oh, I can't. She's been acting weird for ages. Whatever's going on, I need to know. Uh, sorry, mate, I'm just... No, forget it. Too soon? Mm. No. It's fine. Oh. Thanks for meeting me. 
Well, let me get you a drink. Uh, hot chocolate, if I remember. I used to love those when you were little. Used to get the chocolate all around your mouth. Oh, how attractive. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I still do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a hot chocolate, please? You can. <laughs> Money would be good. <clears throat> Forget about these things in the real world. Oh, Vanessa's got into a right state. Something about a, something about a Barbie doll. She said I'd nicked off you to give to her. Can you believe it? My car. Well, she's convinced she's still cut up about it. Stupid doll or car or whatever it is. Mind you, it would give me 10 out of 10 for ingenuity. Later, yeah? Rakesh! Ah! Oh, stupid dumb thing. Oh, that is no way to talk about your husband. It's like we never get to talk, ever. And then when we do, he's still so down. That's called jet lag. And he's abroad, of course you're not gonna get to talk much. No, there's more to it. Oh, this is driving me insane. First things first. You need food. Now I fancy a big fry up. How about you? Just a coffee, thanks. Oh, well, you're no fun. I need to do something for him. What if I go all out and I find a buy for mill? And every place has got to sell at some point. How hard can it be? Well, oh, there's flying a paper aeroplane to the moon and then they're selling the mill. Who asked you? Nose bag. I don't care what they say. I'm not standing by and watching my daughter being taken away. Look, I hear you, love, but what can we do? I found a private place. It's in Manchester. OK, it's a bit of a trek, but at least it's not flame in Surrey. That'll cost thousands. Well, then, we'll put everything together that we've got. We'll sell things that need to be sold. We'll ring the bank, call in our favours, do anything that we can. But even if that were possible, she would need a referral and then an assessment. That won't happen before tomorrow. But it might stop them taking her away straight off. I don't want you getting your hopes up. Oh, Zach, if she goes tomorrow, all hope's lost. So until then, I'm going to explore every option. It's so funny. I love you, Jack. <laughs> don't you do that. Don't you dare say you're a goodbye. <laughs> I swear to God, I heard Dan do a tiny little sob. You got oh. so heartless. <laughs> Oi. Dan's on his way. Gobbo. You do know I heard you on the phone last night, right? Yeah, and he knows nothing. Yeah, we'll keep it that way. Hey! Come and grab a seat. Just ordered you a chilli and a pint. No, you haven't. I'll have now. Oh, can you, uh, just stop the Stepford wife out for two minutes? I'm just being nice. Yeah, that's exactly it. You're never usually nice, are you? You got two settings. Funny rude or rude, so just tell me what is going on. Eh, hey, why are you spinning out? Because every time I try to talk to you, you just close me down or drag me off to bed. And what man complains about that? All right, so you say I'm not a man now. Kerry, if you want to dump me, just get on with it. No, I'm not dumping you, Dan. So, uh, who are you on the phone to? Say you didn't want to hurt me. Ashley! I phoned him to see if he could give us some spiritual counselling. Oh, he didn't say Kerry called. Well, he probably forgot, man, bless him. Don't worry about it, babe. So, you want me and you to go to him for counselling? Oh, no, Ashley's not really working in that capacity anymore. Oh, well, that's fine. Didn't I say it would hurt him even mentioning it? Uh, and uh, I can see how tense things are between you both, yes? Yeah? Ashley. No, w w when you both come round later, say, about... Four... Yeah, about four o'clock, yes. Great. We'll look forward to it, won't we? Yeah. Did you see me with my wallet last night? Thanks, slow down a bit. You're going to give yourself a turn. Did you or didn't you? Um, yeah. Yes, you went to the bar and got around, remember? Right. Well, I just checked my wallet. No bank card. Oh, could it be at the pub? No. And nothing's been handed in either. You don't reckon one of your guests has nicked it, do you? We only have a nun staying with us. What do you reckon? She's gone rogue. <laughs> to think I've been nubbled in my own local. Yeah, but how? You were with us all night. Well, not just us. There were others around. Yeah. Who I know, mostly. 
Yeah, let's trace it back then. You were at the bar. Who else was there? There was me, David, Vanessa, Layla. Frank. Oh, he won't, would he? I mean, you're practically my father-in-law. Penniless, probably. Just out of jail. Hang on a minute. That doesn't mean you can go around pointing a finger. I knew there was something wrong about him. Sly-handed, toe rag. Dad, it, just because Frank's just got out of prison doesn't mean that you can go... Hello. I'd like to uh, report a theft, please. Oh. That's him, officer. Mr Clayton? Yes? There's been an allegation of theft. My dad's had his credit card lifted. Oh, hang on. So just cos he's been inside, you think... I need to get used to this, I guess. Mind if I check your pockets, sir? Go for it. Nothing to hide. This is you, isn't it? Suspecting him the minute something goes missing. Hey, I didn't call the police. It's fine, darling. Don't take it out on your sister. Mr Eric C. Pollard. <laughs> it's as I thought. Mr Clayton? I'm arresting you on suspicion of theft. So, this is a mistake. Is that the best you could do? I didn't take it. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. I don't believe this. Look, it wasn't me. So how is it in your pocket? Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Look, I'm, I'm innocent, I swear. Please, girls, you have to believe me. I did believe him. Not anymore. Thousand pounds, and that's the amount per month, a week. I say, and uh, when could you take her? Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll call you back. I don't blame Lisa for kicking off. As a mother, she needs to be with Belle. Oh, so do I, as a father. Yeah, I know. No, we've no power in any of this. It's either put up or shut up, whether we like it or not. <laughs> how's, uh, how's Belle doing? Ah. <laughs> They're moving her to an hospital in Surrey. Cos they've got no space up here. Oh, they don't make it easy for people, do they? And how's Lisa taking it? How do you think? <laughs> But look, tell her from us, you know, if there's anything we can do. Well, you, you could keep both the jobs open as a starter. I mean, she's going to need a lot of money, the uh, thing she's planning. <laughs> Lisa's is safe. But with Belle's involvement in the cordial side, we need to fill that position. <sighs> Why don't I do it? Temporarily. Uh, and you fill my space instead. I'm a fast learner, and if it means she's got a job to come home to... Sounds like a perfect solution. Oh. <laughs> it was nice as pie in the cafe. Hmm, to you. Might have been fleecing your punters. <sighs> I'm so stupid. This is obviously what he does. It's not your fault. Well, you could see it. Why couldn't I? Well, I couldn't either. I only said to her this morning to make it all right with him. Shows how naive I am. Promise me, we won't let that low life come between us. I like having a sister. <sighs> Just because we share a rat bag for a dad doesn't mean we can't be decent people, eh? <sighs> no offence, Ash. But I don't know why we just can't talk to each other about this. Well, we're here now, Dan, so we'll get over it. Why do you think you can't? Sorry, I'm just getting Arthur's reading book. Because every time I try, she shuts me down and drags me off to bed. Am I sexually harassing you, Dan? Is that it? I mean, I bet you wish you had these problems with Laurel Ashley. How do you know he doesn't? See, this is it. She just assumes rather than asks. I might as well not have a mouth or a brain. Oh, here we go. Poor Dan, the sex object. Yes? 
Yes, this is Mrs Dingle. Oh, thanks for ringing me back. Call that a decision, do you? Have you any idea how desperate we are? Oh, I see. You've tightened your lending criteria. Well, things couldn't have got any tighter for folks like us. Oh, what now? Time it. Calm, Michelle. I've spoken to the clinic. It's £5,000 a week. Yeah, I said, we've no chance. <sighs> and the bank have just turned down a loan. Zach, what are we going to do? Do you think Kane knows a moneylender? Uh, we're not getting in that kind of trouble again. <sighs> I can't give up. I just can't. Maybe the factory could give you a six-month advance on your salary. It won't come anywhere near you. No, but it would help, and they're keen to keep your job open. How would you know? We saw Jay, the... having to fill Bell's job. Yeah, but I said I'd do it, save him from recruiting. Oh, I bet you did. Extra money in your purse, is it? Hey, I offered us a favour, so there was a job for Belle to come back to. Sounds like it suited. You calm down. Look, I will calm down if you stop telling me to calm down. Come on, love. Oh, I've gone through everything. I sell everything I have, the telly the lot. Love, we need about a hundred grand. I have to do something. And on top of that, she's terrified at the sight of me. What? That's her illness. It... If they take her away tomorrow, she might end up forgetting me for good. Well, finally managed to calm my dad down. He had to do a statement and everything. David, do you know what? You'd have thought that it was his life savings, the way that he banged on about it. I need to... Do you know the amount of forms they have to fill in? So I wonder how they catch any criminals with all that paperwork they have to do. David. Take away for tea tonight, my treat. It was me. It what? What? What are you on about? It was me. I stole your dad's bank card. I just don't know what else to do. I'm just fed up with it all, Dad. I know. Oh, answer your phone, lady. Oh, I've been on silent for an hour, but had a nap. Ah, two missed calls for a cash. Yeah, hardly a man who's gone to ground. What were you saying about wanting to sell the mill? Oh, just ignore me. Chrissy was right. I'm planning a wedding for a property developer. Now, he loves a challenge. So, how about you have an open day? A few canopies, a couple of bottles of fizz, and I'll invite him and all his mates in the industry. Never know, someone might snap it up. Seriously, you do that? Oh, yeah, of course, it's got to be worth a shot. Chaz, a large white wine for my friend over here, please. Where have you been, madam? He's a mint four by four at the yard. He'd love it. Doubt it. Homework. I mean, needs a new sound system, like a pain. <laughs> yeah, and the rest. Clutch, suspension, engine. Yeah, but once he's pimped, it'd be worth a fortune. Why, it could be grease lightning, for all I care. Back room, now. Well, I'm buying it. When my money comes to. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, hustling a kid, have you got no shame? Whoa, don't look at me. Yeah, and I'm not a kid, it was my idea. Come on, Charles, I need a project. Yes, yeah, so do I. Preferably one involving Bear Grylls and me on a desert island. But it doesn't mean it's going to happen. May I ask what it was that upset things in the first place? I assure you, it's all confidential. Right, well... He had a snog with Nicola and I can't get past it. I see. She can't get past it because she won't even talk about it. Yeah, which is why we're here now. So, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, but actions speak louder than words, which is why I'm trying to keep his interest in, you know, other ways. You don't have to keep me interested. I'm already interested. And now Amelia's upset. Yeah, and I'm exhausted. I I'm so sorry. When did you have Amelia? Oh, wait, no, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. Uh, I, I, I think I've got it. Uh, yes, um, uh, Ali, you were married to Ali and that's where Amelia came from. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Please don't apologise, Ashley. We should never have asked you to do this. I suppose the good thing about having a counsellor with dementia is that they can't remember your secrets. Mm. Really? I'm having an affair with Laurel as well. <laughs> <laughs> Dan. I could put you in touch with another counsellor if that would help. No, honestly, no. There'd be none as lush as you anyway, kind and you listen. I just can't remember what you said. Mm, probably for the best. Maybe less sex and uh, more talking might help. Oh, hang on, mate. I'm not after that advice. Mm. Listen, you've got me. 
And you don't have to do anything to keep me. Because I love you anyway. Dan. And I promise I'll never do anything to jeopardise this. Ever again. Just as long as we keep talking, whatever it is, just tell me, OK? I was scared he was going to mess up again. <laughs> what, so you thought you'd just get in there first? You've not been hurt by him. I couldn't take the risk. So just ask him to leave. He wouldn't have gone. Tracy, the man is out of prison on licence. You've robbed him of his freedom. I thought it was trouble. He probably is. If he hadn't done it last night, it was only a matter of time. Only now we'll never know, will we? Huh? Because he's back in jail. Can you stop judging me for one second? Tracy, do you not understand what you've done? You've lied to send your own dad back to prison. Yes, I lied, OK, because the man is toxic. Do you know what, Tracy? I don't think I do want to marry her. Because the only person that's toxic around here is you. Good. Because I never even agreed to marry you in the first place. We're both happy then, aren't we? Kirk is stunned by Beth's secret. Yes, it's off to Coronation Street next tonight here on ITV. Then the case of a missing father is not all it seems. A brand new case for DCI Banks and the team at nine.